Hello and welcome to another managerial special from the On This Ball podcast. I'm Craig Savage and with me as always is Mr. Daniel Cody. We are back in the championship. Another manager has gone and that is Barnsley's Marcus Shop. He's been given the sack a day before their next game against Derby, which is a big relegation battle at the bottom of the championship. And we kind of said in the summer when he got appointed that we wasn't sure on this one and we were right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We were right on this occasion. I mean, I obviously even went to the extent of tipping them for relegation because they'd appointed him this year. And so far, they're in that exact position. But this uh, sacking early doors probably means that won't now come off. And I'm glad in a way, because I think Luton and Barnsley have got a bit of an affinity. But it just didn't work out. Obviously, Barnsley have had great success in recent years in going to that sort of market in Germany and Austria for both players and for coaches. But in this occasion, the head coach appointment, it just didn't work out. It wasn't a head coach that suited the style of play. It wasn't one really that had the CV that the others that had come had had. But you kind of can understand the board potentially getting a bit complacent because it had worked so well with Stendhal, with Struber, with Ishmael. You just think that production line is never ending and eventually it's going to get found out. And unfortunately, on this occasion, we suggested he wasn't the right appointment based on our research pretty brief research it has to be said of his career in Austria and I think it would be fair to say we've been proven right which begs the question if me and you can work it out how have the Barnsley board not before appointed him do you think uh the Barnsley board do you think it was one step one manager too many for that sort of range and obviously no disrespect to it's the clubs he's managed in Austria and in Germany and especially the others because you have to admit the others have done well do you think this one was just a bit too much yeah, and I just I just don't think he was as good a head coach. He didn't perfectly suit their style of play. He wasn't quite as attacking and pressing as some of the others. He also hadn't really managed top clubs. I mean, we talk about Valerian Ishmael. I think the last game he managed for, for Lask was against Manchester United in the Europa League. And you're talking about a manager who was managing mid-table in the Austrian League. And it, it wasn't so much where he'd managed. It was the style for me that was never going to work. And as has been proven the case, on the pitch... It's been an unmitigated disaster this year. Off the pitch, I am going to say we try to be balanced in these debates. I will say later on, I don't think Marcus Schopp is entirely to blame, and we'll get to that in a bit. But it was only ever going to end one way. And we talked about it in the prediction show yesterday for the midweek fixtures. If he didn't get a result in the midweek game against Derby, we thought he'd go before the massive game against Hull anyway. But obviously the Barnsley board have decided that they need it done for Derby because it's two massive home games this week before the international break. They've got to get at least one win out of them, you'd think. Absolutely. And let's look at his record in, in his time at Barnsley. Play 15, only the one win, five draws, nine defeats, 10 goals scored, 22 conceded. Obviously, defensively, it's not pretty. They're currently 23rd in the Championship and would are lucky they're the 23rd in the Championship because if Derby didn't have their points deduction, they would be rock bottom. Yeah, and even so, if Derby beat them in midweek, they'll be rock bottom. So it's really not a good state of affairs for Barnsley. The the research for the on the pitch surprised me a little bit. It's very different to what we had with Cardiff, I guess, a couple of weeks ago, where the expected goal stat I'm not a fan of, but Barnsley's expected goals isn't that bad. They've missed a lot of good chances this year. They haven't created bundles, but they've missed some very good chances, which could have changed games. But almost the opposite, and something that Barnsley have been prided on in recent years, is late goals, is finishing games strong, is pressing high. Even you remember back to the great escape against Brentford, late goals to keep them up against very good sides, fitness prevailing. We saw against Luton last season, second half goals. Daryl DK will mention in a minute key to that, and Alex Mowat too. But this season, bar the Sheffield United game, where obviously they had to go for it a three down, they've only actually scored one second half goal. Four games where they've been in a leading position and they've blown it. The one, only game they did win against Coventry, it was only due to a penalty save from Gil Keres, otherwise that would have been one all as well. We're talking about a side that can't hold on to leads and isn't defending as well as last year. And I think probably the most worrying stats from the look of it, compared to last season, significantly less interceptions, recovery runs and ground covered per game on average. That is never going to lead to a good combination defensively. And Barnsley, from Ishmael, which was watertight at the back, has gone to a team which looked like conceding two or three most games. And with the problems they've had at the other end, not replacing DK, not replacing the talisman in midfield, there was always going to be problems. And I think we're not surprised by this at all. But the timing the day before the game is a little bit odd. 
Well, you just literally took the question out of my mouth there about <laughs> obviously losing key players and not, not just key players itself. Obviously, DK was a loan sign in from last season. Uh, Alex Mo, obviously the captain, he went on to uh, follow Mishmael at West Brom. But the backroom staff as well, Adam Murray, who, who had done caretaker charges in between the Stendals and your um, Strubers has also gone following with Ishmael. So that key balance of player and, and management is gone. So it had to start fresh with Barnsley and they had an identity for the last couple of years and they obviously worked with, uh, started with Marais before Stendhal, but they seem to have lost their identity when, once my uh, Microsoft came in through the door. And I think you have to take blame on the owners and, and the, the, the board. Now, Microsoft will surely have to go to the experienced English manager? Well, potentially, yes. I think you mentioned a really great point, and it was one of the ones in my notes, was it wasn't just the fact they lost Ishmael and Mao at West Brom, it's that they lost Adam Murray and they lost other members of the backroom team. When they lost their previous ones before, the likes of Stendhal and Struber, the backroom team had largely stayed intact. And that's a lot of familiar faces gone off the training ground in the treatment room. Players get used to familiarity. They get they get a buzz off having the same people in the club, those who have been part of your momentum and your growth, which Barnsley have had in the last few years and at a great level as well. So to have lost that as well, I think you you say it's more than just losing Mauer and DK and Ishmael. So I think you're spot on with that. They haven't replaced the goals. They haven't replaced the talisman. But what are they going to do manager-wise? I've already seen at the early favourites, Chris Wilde, that that's never going to happen. He will not accept a head coach job after the, the loggerheads he had at his beloved club, Sheffield United. I did mention it in the, the manager special for Cardiff, didn't I, Craig? What I thought would happen a month later down the line. The Yorkshire Irishman will come and save them. And I know the Barnsley fans, I saw it mentioned a couple of times on social media, said it would be a disaster. But you're obviously basing that off what happened at Cardiff. Mick McCarthy is a proven championship manager. He's done good jobs in good positions. And I genuinely feel that it could be a good fit for both of them. I know there's lots of other familiar names up there, but I agree with you. I think they have to go for a safe managerial appointment on this occasion. But whether they will is a very different question. Yeah, because they've taken risks in the past with these guys and not not knowing the English game. And and it worked it worked until obviously Marcus shot. Obviously, we said Mick McCarthy. Is is that a heart overhead decision for you, or are you thinking it could be someone else? Um, I genuinely think, I know that a lot of Barnsley fans will be thinking, what on earth are you saying? I genuinely think with what's happened to Mick at Cardiff and what's happening to Barnsley, it could be the perfect mix for both. I think the team that they've got with Corley Woodrow as a focal point, with good creative players out wide, the likes of Callum Styles who can play inside or out on the, on the wide area too. I think they've got real players that suit the way Mick McCarthy would play, which Cardiff perhaps didn't. They have still got the area of issue in midfield where Mowat's gone and they haven't been able to get consistent replacements in, but Josh Benson just coming back to fitness now is a positive and they've got a few young players who could deliver in there. But there's a lot of great names on that list. I know obviously Joseph Lawman's on there, which is a bit more of a uh, Barnsley appointment, I guess, traditionally, but Alex Neal, Gareth Ainsworth, Paul Warren, Neil Lennon's quite high up the list, which I found quite weird early doors. But it seems to be a lot of managers with either championship experience or coming up from League One. And I don't know which of those two options they take. But I genuinely believe, as stupid as it sounds, after what's happened, that Mick McCarthy could be the perfect fit for both him and for the club. I think where we could do the obvious names of even Chris Hewton has been linked. uh, Obviously, his name has been not linked, but his name has been mentioned or I've seen. But because it's Barnsley and they're throwing curveballs and who hired his manager, they could go back to going to Austria and German, like second cover division in Germany. You never know. You generally don't know with Barnsley. For me, I think Alex Neal's got a good shout, you know. He took Norwich when they were in the, in the quagmire. He took Preston when they were a bit in the quagmire and got them solid in the championship. Obviously done really well with Hamilton before that. He got them promoted. So I think he's more of a safe, cheaper bet, to be honest, than the experienced Mick McCarthy. Or I think then him, Mick McCarthy returned to the game two weeks, a week or so after we just uh, done another managerial special, I think could be a bit too much for me. And same, and, and the same for Chris Hume. So I've, I, I said Alex Neil for Forest and that didn't work. So, uh, but yeah, I think Alex Neil is the guy for me. The only thing I was going to add to that, Craig, is I think the reason it won't be someone like maybe Hewton or even Neil Lennon off the top of that list, and maybe even Gareth Ainsworth as well, 
is you mentioned it perfectly about Barnsley losing their identity. Their identity is a high pressing side, a side that likes to push forward. And I think probably Alex Neil at his best at Norwich did do that. I think probably Mick McCarthy as best at Wolves did do that. But I think some of the others may be trying to set up a bit more defensively and just containing the championship. Yes, it might work, but you probably do risk losing that identity long term. And the longer you go without it, the harder it gets to get it back, doesn't it? Absolutely. Let's have a quick prediction on where do you think they'll end up in the season? I oh, know you tipped them for relegation. Well, that was under Marcus Schott. Now it's a bit, obviously a new man is going to be in charge. Do you still think they're going to be relegated? Or with the teams that are around there at the moment, obviously Derby still got a potential another, uh, point deduction. Hull, Peterborough. Do, do you think Barnsley might stay up? I think they've got a far better chance now than they did at the start of the season because Marcus Schott, obviously, I've said it before, I really didn't rate. If they get the right appointment, if they get McCarthy or Neil, someone who's going to play a bit more on the front foot when he's got his best players available, I trust them to stay up and comfortably. I know Wilder's the favourite, but he ain't going there. So I, I think they'll stay up because, as you mentioned, Derby are going to lose more points. We've also got Reading, who have got an EFL charge hanging over them, starting to slide. Hull look abysmal. Peterborough poor on the road. There's a lot of poor sides and a lot of sides that are going to be affected by financial issues. So I think that may even by default keep them up. As obviously two years ago, they were helped by a points deduction as well, weren't they, with Wigan? But it depends on the appointment and also it depends on the recruitment in January. Are you going to be able to get the stroke of luck you got with, say, Daryl DK last year? Can you replace that talismanic figure in the middle? And I think that probably depends on what manager's in charge. So, yes, just. For me, it's quite tight I, I i think it will go down to the final day like it normally does for the championship and it could be a five team swing like it was a couple of seasons ago obviously during the, the restart and from the pandemic so it i don't know i really don't know it depends on who they appoint if it's the right appointment even if you'd said McCarthy, mccarthy or neil or a solid one then yeah they could do it but obviously recruitment's going to be key in january as well because they have to find a way to one to create more and score more. Obviously, Corey Woodrow is top goal scorer on three. So that has to improve straight away. So they, if they can get someone to play alongside Woodrow, that, that could be helpful as well. But I think I think just, just not, I, I, I'm with you. I, I think 21st could be, uh, I think it could be 21st. Hull and Peterborough for me at the moment. At the moment, but championship changes all the time. So we don't know. But that's our reaction to Marcus Shop's sacking from Barnsley. Let us know your thoughts on the second. Do you agree with what we're saying or who we think is going to be appointed or not? Let us know in the comment section down there. Give this video a like, subscribe to the Honest Football Podcast, and you can follow us on Twitter at Honest Football Free. And we'll see you next time.